In this tutorial, we're going to configure the Citrans LT500 for Profibus and Profinet using TIA Portal in five very simple steps. If you're connecting the Citrans LT500 to a Profibus or Profinet network, you will require the GSD or GSDML file. From the main product page, click Support and then Downloads. You will then be redirected to the Siemens Industry Online Support website. From here, you will be able to download EDDs, GSD files, and other useful information related to the LT500. For this example, I'm going to download the GSDML file for the Profinet version. All we have to do is simply download the XML file along with the bitmap. Now you have your GSDML file downloaded, you can move to TI Portal. In TI Portal, if you go to Options, Manage General Station Data, Browse to where you downloaded the GSDML file, click OK on the folder, and now Portal will import that GSDML file. Once complete, you can click Close, and now TIA Portal will update its catalog with the new GSDML file loaded. To configure the Citrans LT500 in TIA Portal, we firstly need to find the device and assign it a device name. TIA Portal has a very handy feature which allows us to scan our network and find the Profinet devices using the network card in our PG. If we choose our network card and then we do an update accessible devices, TI Portal will go out and look for the Profinet devices connected to our local area network. If we look down the list of devices here, you'll notice we have devices with device names and IP addresses. However, there is a device here which does not have a name or an IP address. If we access the Citrans LT500 through the local user interface and go to the communication menu, we will see the MAC address of the LT500. So the first thing we need to do is to assign a device name. So if we look at our LT500 and we go to Online and Diagnostics, this will allow us to go and assign a device name. In our example, let's use LT500 for the device name. We simply enter the device name, we hit the Assign button, and now the name will be sent to the Citrans RT500. If we update our accessible nodes once again, we now should see that the Citrans RT500 has a device name. However, the Citrans RT500 does not have an IP address, which means that it's not assigned to an I.O. controller yet. We will discuss further the IP address and device name later in this tutorial. For now, let's see what a working system would look like. If we look at the LT500 connected to the S7-1500 via Profinet, and we take a look at the properties, we'll notice that our project has an IP address already assigned. This IP address will be used by the I.O. controller and sent to the LT500 after the I.O. controller has found the device by its device name. So here we've given it the name of LT500. This device name will be used by the I.O. controller. All we need to do to get our system up and running is to download to the I.O. controller. The I.O. controller will use the device name from our project. 
Once downloaded to the I.O. controller, the I.O. controller will then attempt to look for the Citrans LT500 via its device name. Once it finds the device name, it will then assign the IP address. So if we update our accessible nodes, we will see now that the LT500 has a name and it has its IP address, which means the I.O. controller and the LT500 are now communicating. Let's take a look at our sample TI portal project. In this example, we have an LT500 connected to an S7400 from Profibus DP. In addition, we have an S7500 with an LT500 connected via Profinet. Looking at the module configuration for our LT500, we have inserted a number of modules, a level, a temperature, volume, flow, and a 32 and 64-bit totalizer, and along with our relay status. If we want to add additional process values, we can simply take one from the list, slide it into the rack, and to give it an IO address. This is the address used by the PLC to store the process value. All that's required to do next is to add the IP address and the device name. So if you look at the LT500 properties, we enter the IP address and we enter the device name. The device name will be used by the IO controller to identify the LT500 and then the I.O. controller will issue the IP address. And that's it. You're ready. You can download to your controller now. Let's have a look at the Profibus DP module. Again, the same idea. We have our level, temperature, volume and relay uh, modules inserted here. Uh, but again, we can add additional uh, process variables to our list as well. A little bit different here, we actually have to remove the uh, empty slot before we can add in the new process value. So we can actually just delete the module here. We can go and take the process value we want from the list and put it in the appropriate slot. We simply add the IO address. This is the address that the PLC we use to store that value. And that's it. The only additional thing to do now is to add the Profibus slave address. In the LT500 properties, we simply enter the slave address. And that's it, you're done. You're ready to download to your IO controller. Now that we have completed our hardware configuration, we need to create a tag list. The tag list is used to assign a variable name to the IO memory address. The I.O. memory addresses, if you remember, were what we configured in our hardware configuration. If we look under the Profinet CPU and the tag list, we can see here are the memory addresses that we assigned in our hardware configuration for the various modules or process values we inserted. We can simply uh, give a variable name here for that particular memory address. If we take a look at the S7400, Again, the same idea under our tag list. We have just assigned variables to those memory addresses. These are the variables that the PLC or the watch table will use to access the Citrans LT500 to read and write. Now that we have configured our tags in our tag list, let's take a look at the process values from the Profinet unit. If you remember, we configured a level module, a volume flow module, a relay module, the temperature module for center temperature number one, and we also configured a 32-bit and a 64-bit totalizer. In addition to that, we have also configured the module to allow us to control the totalizers. So if we desire, what we can do, of course, is to uh, stop and reset the totalizer. So if we enter a, uh, a one here, update our watch list, 
we will see that the totalizer will then go to zero and stop incrementing. To start the totalizer again, we can either pause the totalizer, preset the totalizer, stop or start the totalizer. So let's start the totalizer running by entering four, updating our tag table, and you'll see that the totalizer now has started to increment once again. Naturally, the same functionality applies to totalizer number two, in this case, the 64-bit totalizer, which also operates in the same way. If we enter a one, update our tag list, we see that our totalizer resets to zero. To start the totalizer running again, we enter a four, update our watch list, and our totalizer will increment once again.